Welcome back to tonight's vlog. It's not gonna be a long one, but it's gonna be a good one. But what we're talking about in this vlog, you can't really see it's right up the back there. Let me grab a few. Nozzle wipers, Panda Shields. So a few videos ago, we installed one of these nozzle wipers into our P1 series printer and a shield that goes in the purge chute. And I said back then I would bought them, I was gonna test them. Fast forward, I think it's been about two months since I installed those. So being happy with the ones I purchased, I went and bought a whole heap more. Before we can do that, I've got to firmware update all these things. We've been away for a little bit, hence there was a bit of a gap in the videos. I'm just gonna hit update and then we'll continue talking about these. So let's do that. Update. And I do like that when there is an update, it just comes straight up. I don't have to go through a million different Things. Now, this one I've been printing with again. So actually this one I will need to go through firmware. Update, update. Okay, that one got updated already before I hit print. These are now updating. They're not gonna take too long. I've got a Wi-Fi access point that literally lives up here and that links in. So it's got a really good connection to inside and it means the not so great Wi-Fi capabilities of these gets a really good connection here. Let's get back to this. Now the P2S has come out. It's gonna be a lot of people upgrading. It's also gonna be a lot of people looking at their P1S and X1 and thinking, what can I do to improve this? In my opinion, these are the only upgrades you need. That's it, nothing else. Sure, you can go, you can do different print plates like I've got over here. All sorts of different things. You know, we've got AMS flips here that you can see and, or, and you know, just a lot of different things. However, critically, these are going to change your prints. For the simple reason, the poop chute clogging up and little bits of stringing and drabs on the nozzle are an ongoing problem with these printers. Um, it's not an issue out of the box a lot of the time at the beginning, but after you've been using for a couple of months, even with maintenance, they just seem to do it more often. Or maybe it's just serendipitous. You're putting a lot more hours and swaps through your print and therefore it happens more often. Ooh. Uh, my dryer's just kicked off. The shield's real simple, you know? It's just, it's a larger version of the pad that's already in there. Let me get a knife. The shield's significantly bigger. Like when you look at the chute, it, it covers a lot of it. The only thing I'll say about this is, I wish this logo here, all of this is smooth, just the logo's rough. Honestly, I would have preferred they didn't have that logo on there. Or they could have etched this logo on the back here and then when you peel it off and you stick it on, you would have had the logo there. And that meant this entire thing would have been smooth instead of having the logo rough. Onto the nozzle wiper. Uh, it's a nozzle brush, nozzle wiper. What do they call it officially? I don't know. It, it's, it's a nozzle brush, nozzle wiper, same difference. It just clips in. One screw out for the old one and this one just pushes in. It's got the little ball bearings right at the bottom there. You can see inside. So there's no screws. Once you take the screw out, this just clips in. It is absolutely fantastic. However, there is a flaw. So the main issue I experience is the speed at which this goes across like that, because this is still acting as if you've got the original wiper inside your Bamboo Lab printer. However, when you put these in, instead of only having it go like this, the G code I've put below will have it wipe. It'll move slightly, wipe back to the original position and wipe again. That G code is in its infancy. So I've just started with it. You can use it. It'll improve what it does at the moment. However, it will get better over time and I'll do some more updates to it. The speed at which it goes over means that it's not ideal for the rubber. It could be so much better 
if it was slower. So the G code I've put in there also slows down the rate at which it goes over here because this is not like the original wiper. The original wiper was more like a rolling pin on a little stick. I don't know how to better describe it, but that, that was the original wiper and the original wiper worked much better with a high velocity going across the top of it. This doesn't. This, like the A1, works a lot better when that is slowed down and the rubber is given time to grip what's on the nozzle. So the G-code not only increases the amount of passes it does, it also slows down the speed at which it passes. So for me, this already made an improvement out of the box. Now that I've been running the G-code for a little while, it's made a vastly bigger improvement as well. One thing I'd like to do with the G-code is instead of just having it go like this, I would like it to maybe do a bit of a circle on there. So I will look at that, get it moving diagonally, in a future video, I'll do an update. But for now, in its infancy, this is working really, really well. There are links in the description for all of this stuff. Don't feel obligated to use those. Let's go and do an install. This one here, I'm now gonna go through the process with you of installing it. It's really quick, really simple, really easy. Now, you will need one tool for this. It is this, the Allen key that came with your P1S. If you don't have one of these, I tend to use this. It is an M2 size head, and that is all you need. So if you still have the Allen keys from your printer, fantastic. If you don't, any little toolkit with an M2 will do fine. I have the AMS flip, so for me, I leave the rolls in as long as that's locked, and I just lift it up, and I push it to the back. I'll just sit the glass up there. Yep. Stay. The other thing I'd encourage you to do when you do this, take your print beds out. You don't want to drop your Allen key or tools on this and scratch it. So just take it out, it's easy. So the printer's off at the moment. Grab the tool head and slowly, very slowly and gently bring it forward and then to the side. The reason you're doing it slowly, the stepper motors that runs the core X, Y axis, the way it moves the head around, those motors can actually regen power. So if you had an old bed slinger, for example, like an old Creality Ender or something, uh, or even if you have the original SVO6s, they're, they're a good example. If you have the printer off, but you move the bed back and forward really quickly, the screen lights up because those stepper motors can generate power when you're moving the head. So you don't want to burn anything out in your printer. So when you move the head manually in any of these, very slow movements. You don't want to generate voltage going back into the circuitry. Remove, pad, then nozzle brush. If we clip the new nozzle brush in, we can't get the pad in. It takes up too much room. Let's do it. So there is a single socket head screw in here to be removed. So it's between this and the plastic. Okay, I'm in on it. Now, anti-clockwise turn. You can feel when the screw's gone loose. Should be able to just pull that out. And there we have it. Okay, the next bit is we're going to get a rag and brush in here. I have one from earlier because my poop shoots are very greasy. That's what all that, let me show you. That's what all the brown stuff is because I actually use the lubricating grease on the lead screws and I coat the inside here so the purge or the poop wouldn't stick. And that's how I was stopping my poop shoot clogging up. Problem with that is, depending on how many prints I did, I'd have to redo it. And I really don't like having excess grease inside my 3D printer. I'll try and remove this with my fingernail if it doesn't come off. Nope, it's not coming off, that's fine. Any similar tool to your bed scraper will do the job. I have other tools I could use, but I figure this is the most common. There we go. It's just got some double-sided tape on the back. That's it. Some isopropyl on the rag. I tend not to spray the isopropyl in the printer. I like to spray it on the rag and then with the rag, go in there and wipe things up. And there we go. Don't pull the backing paper off yet. We just want to make sure we get used to where it aligns. Just get an idea of how it's going to line up. Sort of get your fingers used to the feeling of 
where that edge is and just where it's going to go. Put your finger on the top of it so you can feel the top ledge. And there you go. Next thing, I put a clip on there and I leave that for a few minutes. And that just helps the pressure adhesive bond to the surface. If you don't have one of these, use a peg. A few moments later. You can take this off now. That's bonded. So we've removed the nozzle wiper. Now let's put a new nozzle brush in. Okay, so down here is the bit that was holding the nozzle wiper. Now we have the new one, which is this one. And this one here has the slit and you're gonna push that onto there. Go down from the top. You can feel it with your fingers where it is. It's just resting on it, it's quite wobbly. Now you hear it click. That's it, it's in. That's not coming off. Now, you can remove them if you need to. You can push them off, but you don't need to. And that is installation complete. And you can sort of see it from here and see how much larger that is compared to the original. It is significantly larger. One, two, give it a, just a brush of, off the top to get rid of the dust. We can bring this back down. Okay, so they're all done, all upgraded, super duper happy. Like I said, I bought these things six weeks, two months ago, and I've been really, really happy. So I went and did the rest of the printers. Links down below, you can copy the title and search wherever it's cheapest. There are a couple of projects where you can 3D print stuff like this, they look interesting. However, at two for six to nine dollars, uh, for me, this is a no brainer. It just clips in. It's a really clever design. I think if you've got an X1, a P1, a P1P, and you're continuing to use them like I am, these are the two upgrades that are essential for it. And they really will improve not having failures and stuff like that as often. The actual print quality, cleaner nozzles a good thing too. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, could you please hit us a like? If you're not subscribed, which is a lot of you, could you please hit the subscribe button? G-code's down below as well. It's in its infancy, I will improve that as we go forward and I'll just keep updating it. Hope you enjoyed that. See you in the next one.